here today to clean up, get the construction debris out of 48th Street. Uh, Miss Alicia, who's behind the camera, got all this cleaned up. The front yard, we so want to show. And as you can see, and as we, I guess, go through this renovation, you'll see what moisture does. And this tree creates leaves that hold a whole bunch of moisture, and they've all been removed. So this concrete was wet for a pretty long time. So Miss Helen the dude, who's in the real estate investment class, and real yes. estate education class. And I said, well, we have a home inspection. We use Burrow, Burrow Home Inspection, which I love because their inspection is like the book on your house, okay? And so I said, well, how she can learn is to go step by step like a um, treasure hunt and see, can she see the same thing as the inspector saw? Hello. Hello. Do you mind being on camera? Okay. How you doing? Alrighty, I'm Wally. Uh, we're about to use this home inspection like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. So I want you guys to find the things in that home inspection. Do you need to relax because you just got here? I'm cool. Okay. I'm right in. Okay. So you've been looking at the home yes. inspection. So let's find some of the things. Okay. The first yeah. thing on the first on page two, we start from the outer of the front of the house, and it shows it shows the. The deck, the brick interior wall has been partially depointed to avoid further uh, water protection. That's yeah. down here. That's down here. Now they're talking about right here. Right here. Yeah. 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 Right there. And it's in the picture. I don't know if you want to see it. It's right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially right here. And it says the brick interior wall needs um, repointing and to uh, it needs to be redone again. And it needs to be painted and sealed. Then it also shows. And if I could say something about this too, I was telling Helen what the home inspector told me. This particular house is a, a lot different from the houses. It's probably a hundred years old, but you can tell these houses were like coming into a modern era of building. So they tried using a lot of steel and concrete. And you can see the steel, so the steel rust, it expands. And it pushes everything, the concrete, the bricks, it pushes it. And that's sort of what happened. Yeah. More Ali. More Ali? Yes. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? This is my son, Justin. Kevin, Sandy Smith, Philadelphia Magazine. Sandy, Kevin Kennedy, your valuable home on ESPN. Oh. Oh. ESPN does a home improvement show? Uh, Weekends they do. Yeah, Beasley Media on 610 locally here in Philadelphia. Really? Yeah. Never yeah. Huh. Yeah, we have a very nice show going on. We were on Fox for three years, and we just renewed. We're on our second year of ESPN. And then working with another company to go on to CBS Radio, which would be 1210. So, yeah. Did I bring business cards? Of course, look me up online. Hey, look me up online. Yeah, we're uh, we're on today also locally on 860 yeah. Talk Radio. We're Radio at two o'clock today. Okay, but you also do TV? Uh, we're getting back to doing. Okay, just a minute. The first uh, TV show we did was with the singer Pink. I kind of need to document this. I hope you don't mind me. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Uh, now it's time for the replay and Ron, we have a special guest with us here today. Indeed we do. We have Alicia Dorsey who's a volunteer with Keeping It Real Real Estate, a new all-volunteer organization in Philadelphia that is teaching people how to fix up homes, care for homes, buy homes, etc., etc. Correct. Welcome. Thank you. you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what, about the program, tell us a little bit more about the program. So I know we have Monica on the show and we got her input, but we'd like to get some more input about what that show is all about. So um, Keeping It Real Real Estate introduces single moms and single dads into purchasing real estate as a way of economic development, but also becoming homeowners. Uh, we found that a lot of single moms and dads are renting these apartments and they're struggling between um, payments and 
it just would be better if we were homeowners um, because Monica says that real estate is the way to wealth. So we're trying to learn that road to wealth through uh, real estate. Absolutely. And that would be Monica Wright, right? We yep. had Monica yes. on the show uh, a couple of weeks back. She's a very impressive lady. She's doing a lot of good work. And, uh, you know, with people like you on her side, I'm, I'm sure everything's going to work out just right. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, she, she's great. Um, she's teaching us a lot when it comes to real estate. She's been in the business for over 20 years now. Um, so she's a plus to, to donate her time and create this organization where she pulls in volunteers to learn about real estate and uh, we don't know the construction piece so that's why I connected with Kevin to learn more about um, what to look for and I'm a contractor um, but it's, it's a great experience just learning because I never knew half of the things that I'm learning now when it comes to property and land and those different things and just being a homeowner it's a plus. Yeah, it's a big plus you own your piece of Philadelphia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I accept it. Like I tell you, when I was down there at the 48th Street property and watch Monica, beside her just doing her volunteer time, she's hands on. Mm -hmm. She got, so after about five minutes of talking, there, a few other people were there and we were just chatting, and Monica was downstairs. When I walked back downstairs, she was shoveling the trash up and actually physically loading that stuff up. She was an absolute machine. It was really nice to see the community, but she really is uh, a great inspiration for the people in that area because. She's hands-on, she's doing a lot of community work. It's all on her time doing it. So it was really nice to see that, and that's why I wanted to make sure that she got her uh, appraise out through here, them doing such a great job with uh, the community and her neck her with that. Uh, Alicia, how many, how, many, how many volunteers do you have at, at the present time? Well, um, when we were at the house, it was about one, two, three, four. It was five of us there, and then we left, and then about three more came. So I would say it's a dozen, at least a dozen That's of good. us. Um, and we meet on Saturdays and some of us are actually training to become real estate agents and some of us are there just to learn because um, we just want to learn. I'm not interested in being a real estate agent, but I do want to understand what's going on when it comes to purchasing property. So at those meetings, it's about 20 of us on Saturdays that come together and study uh, real estate terms. Yeah. It's more complicated today than, I mean, we both experienced that because we both have rental properties. It's more complicated today than it's ever been before. Uh, a lot of, uh, and who knows, maybe, maybe the, uh, the Dodd-Frank thing will start to dissipate, fade into the woodwork a little bit, but it's kind, it's kind of complicated. Yeah, so we're looking to build like a collective or a cooperative mm -hmm. where we all could like buy into these properties and help each other out because everybody needs housing right now. Yeah. I mean, the... Um, I advocate so we look out, reach out to people within our communities, but also to like people from Puerto Rico who are in need of housing also. Oh boy, yeah. um, so there's a big need for housing, affordable housing in Philadelphia. So this is just one tool for us to help create um, affordable housing to fill, to fill that void. Much like your show fills the void on educating homeowners about what to look for uh, with contractors. We're trying to educate people on how to buy properties and don't have to pay a whole lot of money, but um, doing the work on the properties is scary for me. Like, how do we know we're buying a property that we don't have to put a whole lot of money in and we're not experienced contractors, so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what, you, what my advice to you would be to get some people who, you know, contractors, maybe an architect, uh, a lawyer, an insurance person involved as volunteers in the organization so that you have that expertise that you can call on. Because, for instance, you know, if you buy a property and it's not structurally sound, remember that property that collapsed in Philadelphia mm -hmm. a few years ago? Yeah. I think it was Market Street. Was it Market Street? Am I right about that? Came down and um, it's got whatever you buy has got to be structurally sound. If it's not, you got to make it so. So uh, would not hurt to have that uh, those, that expertise in, in the organization. Yeah, when I was down there and I was speaking to a couple of the volunteers and trying to educate them, I said, listen, buying a house is one thing, but there's there's two parts of the process. Just because you get a house and you might have gotten it pretty inexpensively, what are the costs to rehab that to make it livable? And that's one thing before you go even buying into that to make sure the funds are available to know what you're getting into, what you're purchasing that is going to be available to make sure that that cost is going to be in budget to get it back to livable. So that's one thing I said, I'd be glad to help out anybody there. If they just want to give me a call, 
I said their office is there at any time. You can give me a call and I'll be glad to help you out in any which way I can to make sure you're not, yes, a leap of faith, but making sure you're going to be doing it right and you're not stuck in a really bad position now that you own the house. And right. You can't make any improvements. Yeah, once you own it, once you own it, and it's a big problem, it's going to be your problem. Yeah. yeah, the mortgage payments interest are, and they're not going to go away. They're not going to go away. Yeah. Banks don't really care about that point. They say you own the house, the house that's yours. Now at this point, fix it and or live in it, but still they're going to be wanting those payments. So make sure it's just educating the consumer on making, hey, listen, we're going to even find the right contractor. Because even if you got to get that work done, if you don't hire the right contractor, now you spend a lot of money and you got to redo it again. Mm -hmm. So the money is now toppling over and over. And now we just don't want anybody getting such a big debt. So maybe education before where we can advise in the best way possible to make it easier for those people going into purchasing the home. Yeah, you, you are such a blessing um, because it's needed. Like we're scared and buying these property, properties. 48th Street scares me. I mean, because we bought it and we had this contractor come in and he did this bad job and now we're like, we don't have a lot of money to get another contractor. So. The advice that you all offer really is a godsend because it helps people understand, you know, what we should be looking for and what we shouldn't be looking for. And to partner with contractors makes sense also to see if they would want to buy into um, our program also so that we have their expertise there to help um, fix up these properties. Because I'm lost when it comes to buying properties. And we want to buy up the hood. There's so many vacant properties in our communities right now. Um, it's going through a lot of gentrification, but it's not us buying up our communities. It's a lot of people coming from outside the communities, buying them up and turning them into what they want to turn them into. And it doesn't look like our community anymore. So um, that's part of our, our goal is to buy as many properties in our community as possible. Um, that's where we're at. Yeah, having having right contract good contractors on your side because let's face it they're probably going to make money as a result of it somebody's got to fix it up somebody's got to get paid to fix it up so getting them involved would be a good thing to do well we don't want to have this happen again with the, the drywall because i was actually down there for the east street and saw the drywall and there were some issues there that i was really worried about that ceiling drywall with the ceiling yeah they put it well it was the all the the entire room walls and ceiling and i noticed the ceiling wasn't properly done right there should have been more studs or joists that were, were back because they were 24 inch on center so there was very large spans where there was no screws but there was no underlayment to screw it to it wasn't glued and there was only about eight to ten screws per sheet once so it could come down it could come down, could come down. And the paper was also compromised which is the paper is what actually holds it up but the glue is the most important thing i just didn't want to make sure that, that you know hiring somebody you get the right guy so this doesn't happen because you can fix it but i'd still cross my fingers because it, at the point where it should have been done right was not that step wasn't taken so but again it's going to cost a lot more money to have somebody come in and rip all that down and redo it so i'd rather at the, our show is to educate people to say listen uh, if you're getting a contractor we'll talk about on the show of what things you should look for when you're getting that estimate it should be in writing that hey if there's a problem show me that problem what would that cost be so a good contractor is going to be able to do that for you and they can't say well i don't know there should be a good point where a good contractor is, is educated enough to give enough proper advice to give you the price ahead of time on most of the things. Not saying all everything, but some of the things they should be able to, to give that to you. So you're not knee deep in uh, a project where it, it's unattainable and cost that you can't afford to do it right. Okay. Do you think like um, these schools, like Randolph Skill Centers and? Like those vocational schools, would they be good partners? Do you think we're talking to them. Yes, I Absolutely. would say yes. We're talking to them. Because you have teachers educating the students the correct way. So uh, it definitely can make a difference than a lot of the contractors that are fly by nights. They're just in there to get their money and get the job done as quick as possible. And it might not be right for you. The job might not be done right, but they've got their money and you're stuck in a situation that's not little because there's some issues there and you have to deal with it. So hiring that right contract could be the best advice. Different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding, I'm so, finding many, so many different, many different mentality, mentality today. It's hard. 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 It seems it challenging. Seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, so, so I'm ready. I'm ready for this ready challenge. For this challenge. And, and I was built. I was built for this. this. I think that I think we, we all have, we a, all have a purpose in life. life. And mine's and mine's going to take on a task that most of us back away back from. Away